billions of stars, trillions of worlds, some maybe even with life forms staring right back at us in their own night sky. Pretty lame, right? At least until we add Aurora. And here's how to do that with three noises, three blurs, and not really much else. And we start with, of course, making a new comp that I will call One Noises. And in that comp, I'll create a layer, which I will call Ribbons. Now let's add a fractal noise to that boy. You can use many different types of fractals and get many different types of effects, but for what we need, we need some sort of a smeary spline. So I will set the fractal type to smeary, noise type to spline, and if I invert that, we have a lot of ribbons. A bit too many. So I'm also going to set the complexity to 1. And then I'm going to add a levels to that layer and also turn the gamma to something ridiculous, like 0.1. So we get these really nice and sharp ribbons. That's it for noise number one. I'll duplicate that layer and name that one mask, because this is going to mask some of those ribbons out. And this layer needs to be set to multiply. I'll solo that one, turn off the levels for now, and I'll reset the fractal noise. Now for this one, we want a fractal type called dynamic, and again, a noise type called spline. So we get some nice and cloudy looking noise, but I also transform that scale up to about 300. So it's a little bit bigger. Now on the levels for this one, we want those really crushed. Make sure some of the black is clipping and make sure some of the white is clipping as well, only a little bit. And then gamma as well. Set that to something very low, like 0.3 to get a nice and contrasted look. Now if we turn that back on together with our initial ribbons layer, get a little breaking up of the ribbons. Now for our third and actually final noise, I'll duplicate the mask layer and call this one pillars, because this noise is going to help us make pillars. And I'll show you what that means in a bit. Now the transfer mode for this one, we want to set to overlay, so it kind of intensifies the whole thing, and it doesn't need the levels. Again, I'll reset the fractal noise. And in this one, the only thing we need to change is setting the scale to 2 and the complexity to 2 as well. Now if we zoom in, we can see that we've got some very grainy looking noise, and that's exactly what we want. Now to animate this thing, all we need to do is press three buttons and type three bits of text in. I'm going to start on the pillars by alt clicking the evolution there and type in time times 500. And the time expression is very simple and very useful. That's just going to keep adding 500 units per second to our evolution. So now our little pillars layer creates this nice and moving little grain like that. And I'll do that for the other layers too. On the mask, I'll alt click evolution and type time times only 50 because I want that one to move a lot slower. And on the ribbons, I'll do exactly the same time times 50. Now our noises animate just like this. We could keyframe the evolution as well, but using the times expression, the animation just continues infinitely at the same speed. That's it for the noises, and now it's time for the blurs. I'm going to drag the noise comp onto the make new comp button and name the new comp to blurs, because we're going to add a heck load of blurs. First of all, though, we want to add a background layer. We want to make that pure black and add it in the background. And then we will make our noise layer into a 3D layer. I'm going to go into rotation on that and rotate it about 80 degrees on the X axis. Move it up a little bit and also move it back into space. So it looks like it's kind of sitting up in the sky, you know, where you normally find Aurora, unless you're in Australia. And then I'll turn up that scale to about 400%. Nice and big. And now... Let's make our first blur. Start with an adjustment layer, and I will name this one Edge, because this is going to make the leading edge of the Aurora. On this adjustment layer, I want to add a CC Radial Blur. Not the Radial Fast Blur, because that one's not quite going to work with what we're going to do with it. The CC Radial Blur is where it's at. I'll change the type from Scratch to a Fading Zoom, and I will set the amount to something insanely high. Point three. And as you can see, that doesn't do anything. It's a tiny, tiny amount. But 
we want to set the center point, or at least the y-axis of the center point, to 100,000. So it's really, 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 really far down. And now we have basically a radial blur that acts as a sort of directional blur, only along one axis, mostly. And that's exactly what we want. Now finally, for this very first blur layer, I want to add a tint to that and map the white point to sort of cool looking green. Set the hue to about 130 and set the saturation near the middle around 50. That's layer one. I'll duplicate that edge blur layer and rename it to streaks. And I'll set the new layers transfer mode to add instead of normal. So it just adds more light on top. And I'll set the CC radial blur to the massive number of 1.5. So they really stretch out into space. I'm going to change the tint to a slightly warmer color, somewhere around 105 on the hue. And I'll also add a levels adjustment to this one. Turn down the white point a little bit, just so it gets a bit brighter, to about 17,000. And set the gamma to 0.9 so it gets a little bit of a sharper roll off. And that's it for blur number two. Now for number three, duplicate streaks, and I'll rename this one purple. Because although Aurora generally is seen as being green, it's not really all there without a tinge of purple in the streaks. Now the radial blur for this one, I'm going to set that to a whole number two. And I'll change the tint, of course, to be a sort of purple at about 280 on the hue. And set that saturation all the way up. Now the levels, I'm going to get rid of. And the opacity of the layer overall... I just want to set to something quite low, like 20%. Just so we get a sort of subtle hint of purple at the very top of the brightest streaks. Now, now to finish off these blurs, let's actually make a new adjustment layer and do some color adjustments. We'll start by adding a vibrance effect and setting the saturation to a little bit higher, to about 42, so we get a little bit punchier colors. And also add an overall levels to that, where I just crush the white point down a little bit to about maybe 20,000. Now, only after a few minutes, we have Aurora that actually looks pretty good. And if you can see all these lovely little pillars, that is what the third noise layer does. Just adds that little bit of extra detail that real Aurora actually has. Now, all that's left to do is to go back into our comp where we have our lame footage of the milky weights. And just drag in the blurs comp on top of that and set that to transfer mode add. And the sky is full of Aurora. Now you can track this into your own footage and just add it as a plate. And of course, as always, you can add a truck ton of glows and other magic to just really set it into the scene. Now, if you haven't got five minutes to do this setup on your own, you can always join the Patreon and download this exact file and poke around with it yourself. If you like Aurora as much as you like working smoothly with clients, then you really should join the Process of Motion course. It'll teach you everything about running motion design projects from brief to delivery. And you'll get to see some Aurora in the process. If you want to learn how to do proper three-dimensional Aurora, stay tuned for the next tutorial where I'll show you how to do exactly that in Cinema 4D. As always, thank you to my mortal patrons. You are the heroes that keep the Tuto train chugging. And to all of you, stay in ribbon-shaped undulating motion.